All right, in today's little video, how do I get dust off my computer components? Yeah, this stuff isn't uh, isn't too expensive. Old Amazon, I try getting the stuff around here, but it costs too much. Head on over to Amazon or another computer store, and uh, yeah, I'm getting kind of sick of Amazon because they're yeah, whatever. Anyway, this is pretty good. I think it was like for two of these cans, it was twelve bucks, if that. Compressed air. Do not shake these cans. Read the instructions. Put the little tube in. It's going to blow out too. You might have to hold the tube when you're spraying this stuff, this compressed air. Do not spray too close. And if it gets really cold, the can will cold and get condensation. Just back off. That's why you should have two cans. Like just start doing a little burst to get the dust bunnies out. You know? And the can's at room temperature right now. But as you spray it, it gets colder and see the little the little tube will pop out you got to put your finger against it or glue it in there or whatever yeah so watch that once it gets cold in condensation put it down let it get back to room temperature because it loses um pressure and you're just kind of squirting in moisture into your components you don't want that so don't do that that's why you have two cans once this one does get colder and loses pressure use the other one boom easy pro tip Put a rubber band around it so you can put the little tube back in so you don't lose it. Because when you just blow it generally like this, you're not, I mean, it's just, I don't, you're not getting in between the fins on the cooler. All right, next thing I found here. Watch out on these damn motherboards uh, with your GPUs. Here's your PCIe slot. And uh, here's one that works, right? See the little lever? That, see that little lever? That locks down your uh, GPU into the slot. Boom. When you, you leave it up like that, when you push down, it just locks in. And then when you want to release it, you got to lift that up and pull out the card for that little tab right there. This one moves. I don't know what happened here. Look at that. It got all mangled up. I don't know. It just got caught wrong on one of the GPUs. And now it's just a mess. You got to wash that because you will end up... Let me show you this. Hold on, big guys. Hold on. Try to do it one-handed here. That little tab right there is what latches in to that spot right there. Ah, you get it? You got to watch that because I had a pain in the butt getting that out and getting this card out. You'd be very careful. But if you do break it, Super glue will fix it, but just don't break it. That's the secret. So watch some of these things on there. When you seat these things, push it in all the way. Oh, who's calling us? Spam. Every time I get a spam call, I block the number. It's just, they got your number out there, man, and they're just trying to scam you every which way using AI and that. So watch out for that. You've never seen a fish catch a man. That's all I can say. Only if you're going fishing do you entertain any options or calls, right? All right, back to it. So there you go. Watch out for those damn PCIe slots and those little lockdowns. This is a ROG Strix board, so I don't know what happened. I don't know. Maybe I didn't seat it right, or maybe I bent it. I have no idea. So don't mess up your card, and don't mess up your motherboard. All right, we got the spray. So I found out I still have two 6600s left. Unbelievable, man. How many cards did I have? I must have sold about 30 so far. Power cooler, I'm going to probably keep, I'm probably going to keep two of these. And then the rest I have, 1660s. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I might just keep one or two of these. Again, you're not getting much money for them. You're getting 150 bucks at that. I mean, it's just not worth the effort to deal with eBay and possibly getting scammed by somebody on eBay. Yeah, eBay, if you want to be scammed, use eBay, man. What a rip. I mean, they take 14%. And if you're selling a really expensive GPU over 700 bucks, most of the scam is you ship it. The guy goes, I never received it. Or I received an actual brick, a physical brick, a brick you build a building with. They lie to eBay. eBay always protects the customer. They don't protect the seller. So even if you ship it, signature, adult signature required and tracking, you're paying extra to get that thing shipped. Signature guarantee, blah, blah, blah. Insurance as well. Oh, they'll still try to scam you. So you really got to be careful. What I do on eBay is I see who buys the thing. 
I first click on their ID, their username, whatever the hell eBay uses. And then I go and see how long they've had their account. If it's a new account, some people will do that. They'll just create an account that day and try to buy something. They're scamming you. I want some, uh, I want some longevity with the account and I want some feedback from people that actually sold to these people. If they are a new account, no, I just say I'm not selling it to you. I just say, sorry, eBay, and this is not going out to these people because it's a scam, right? And if they have no feedback as well, new account and no feedback, forget it. New account, you're not going to have a feedback anyway, but if you have a uh, old account and no feedback, that's suspicious too. You got to have an older account, at least say six months or older and some feedback. Otherwise, it's just not worth dealing with the scam. It's going to be a scam. You're going to be out of the money. You're going to deal with the hassle. Blah, blah, blah. It's just not worth it. Uh, then you can do uh, face, a fake book marketplace and probably get robbed there too in person. You just got to be careful. If you're selling in person, go to the lobby of your local police station. Let the desk cop know, hey, I'm just meeting someone here to sell something online. They're cool with that. They get it. They understand it's risky out there today. It's a fallen world and there's a lot of crime. Crime is not being punished these days. So people are getting away with a lot. So you got to be careful. All right, what else have we got going on? So that's my dust bunny. I got my GPUs. I don't know if this one needs cleaned or not. I'm looking at it. This one looks pretty good. Uh, it's amazing when you put that compressed air through these fins. The old dust bunnies come out. And whatever you don't get out, do not use anything metal. Use a toothpick or a little kebab stick, a wooden thing. And go in between the, uh, the little fins here. I can hear that can fizzing. Uh... Go through the little fins here, and uh, you can just go through each one. If you have time, man, if, you, if, you, if you're bored, you just want to kill time, it's a little uh, satisfying thing. Go through, get all the little dust bunnies out, and then you'll, they'll start clumping up, and then you can uh, get as many as you can, and then put the compressed air through it. Uh, make sure you pull out the bunnies first, otherwise the compressor will blow them right back into the fins, and you're back to where you started. Uh, you can even put a little vacuum on here, but watch out for these little fins on these fans, man. They can break, and if you break one, then it's off balance and it doesn't work right, and then you got to spend nine bucks to buy a new one or find one that fits. Good luck, good luck, good luck. Just don't break it to begin with, uh, and try not to drop your GPUs like I do. I sometimes drop them. I don't know why. I'm just an idiot, but um, I think I dropped two, but they still work. <laughs> they still work. Uh, let's see what else. Yeah, these are all clean. I went through with this guy. Look at that. And when the blade's there, I do wipe them with a uh, lint-free cloth very gently. Because, again, I don't want to break. I don't want to break the fins off my uh, CPU cooler. Nope. I don't want to do that. So this one's nice and clean. The dust went everywhere blowing these things out. So you got to be careful. Once you do it, vacuum around your area. Otherwise, they'll just suck the dirt right back up into the coolers. And you're back where you started from. Yeah, it just keeps them running cleaner. Uh because as you build up, like on your ceiling fans, you just build up lint and dust, and it just makes them off balance, makes more drag, and just puts more wear and tear in the components, and then maybe overheat a bit. You want to keep the uh, keep your components clean, free of soda. That's why I like hanging, hanging these vertically now. Look at that. The Borg rack. I can't even zoom back. I got so many on here. Look at that. It just keeps most of the dust off these motherboards in that. Uh, not that it's going to prevent them from running, but again, it just if you can keep them clean, why not? Uh, but if it ain't broke, sometimes don't fix it. But it looks nice and shiny now, that one. That one was laying flat and had dust everywhere. Just uh, two cans of air, and I still have probably at least 30% uh, in each can left. So I went through like seven rigs and cleaned them out. But there you go. What else we got going on? That is it. We have stopped mining as of February 5th today. It's just not worth it. I tried mining Zerg Pool. Uh, you'll see the videos on that. I tried to do solar mining, regular mining on Nice Ash again. It's just not worth it. The money you're getting, it's, it's, I know it's money, but it's just not worth me to run the rigs for the sake of just running them. I get it. I know what I'm doing. I, it's fun. I figured it out. But I would like to make a couple bucks, and I figured out how nice hash works and tweaked it and all that stuff. And Zerg pull was a big disappointment. Solo mining. I went, all right, I'm just going to let these rest for a bit, clean them up. I'll keep them off until the profitability cranks up a bit more because I just don't want to you know, make nothing for nothing. Uh, and make a little bit of Bitcoin. I want to make a little more Bitcoin. So it just doesn't seem to be uh, worth the effort right now. I'm going to probably maybe fire them up. Once the profitability on my little old CPUs, again, these are Ryzen 9, 3900, nothing, not the latest, greatest stuff, not the thread rippers or anything like that people have, 
or the fives, but it, they are what they are, and it can make a buck now and then a day. That's fine. But right now, after electricity, my God, I think they're making 35 cents. It's just, eh, I don't know. At that rate, it doesn't seem to have the noise, worth the noise in the room and uh, the electricity cost. Right? Right. I don't know. That's where I'm at now. I'll probably change my mind tomorrow. Once I see it get above, uh, what I what I would figure is 50 cents after electricity. So that's probably worth it for me to see. All right. I don't know. What are you guys doing? I still haven't bought memory for this one, but that's a Ryzen 5. And uh, everyone else has at least two sticks. Yeah, there you go. That's where I'm at now. I don't know why I showed you. I was just going to show you this and then the how to clean the CPUs, but I went off on all this other crap. But uh, that's what I do. I just go and I start looking around. And it's like owning a house. When you start looking around, you start finding more and more problems with a house. It's like, oh, I got to fix this. Oh, I got to fix it. Oh, I broke that. And yeah, so far, these are uh, pretty solid. No real issues after three or four years running these uh, components. Yeah, just don't break stuff. Don't be, don't be rough with them. I don't know what happened there. Yeah. All right, I am out. Go forth. Keep crushing it, as Sarasota Tim, my new hero, would say. Sarasota Tim is crushing it. If you don't know who Sarasota Tim is, <laughs> you may not like it. It's kind of a silly way to go watch a guy on YouTube. And uh, he's Sarasota Tim. And oh my God, if you don't think you can do a YouTube channel, just watch Sarasota Tim. He's just filming himself going to store shopping and going to Bucky's and uh, looking at food. And he's just talking about nothing. And But the guy's got 60,000 subs and he's probably making about a thousand bucks a month in YouTube ad revenue. This channel is not even monetized. So I'm actually impressed that this guy is just out there like a little baby Yoda running around, has all these subs because he he made one video about Social Security, which was had bad math in it, bad public math, and wasn't really accurate with the way he was doing the numbers. So if you're looking at how Social Security works, yeah, I would pay a certified public accountant or a, a CFP a couple bucks just to say, explain it to me. And then, then you're good because these guys do it every day. Don't listen to some guy on YouTube. All right. Go forth. They're great things. Keep crushing it. Rawr. <laughs> I'm out.